All right, I'm wiping some some filler back here on the back. There was a couple of ripples back here. Factory ripples. Now I said I'm going to get out, but. Change my mind, obviously. I figure I'm damn doing it. So, here's a case where I'm obviously, you know, wiping the large area. You got my normal size spreader here. I'm trying to over wipe, in other words, and you try to wipe it high so you can work it down. I may wind up having to wipe this one more time. I'm not trying to overdo it this first time out. Kind of depends on what I come up with. I could have, I could have wiped it really heavy the first time out, but I generally try not to do that unless it's a really, you know, huge, huge dent. You had the body work and it's, you know, just crinkled all up and, you know. You try not to do that, but sometimes, in the especially in collision repairs, just sometimes it just happens. It's unavoidable. Now this spot right here, I can tell you, I'm gonna have to wipe. I'm gonna have to wipe again. I know for a fact because I'm leaving it short at the top. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna be out of filler here. This this one here is pretty large. I will go ahead and just wipe this one all the way up gonna be a whole lot easier to block it flat if I do that now. So I'll just I'll just mix some more filler for this for the other side. You know I could have mixed more filler but I, I, like I said earlier I try not to waste this stuff. Especially now that it's gotten so damn expensive. Really try not to waste it nowadays. This area back here is not going to be seen with the bed on it. I wasn't originally going to fix it. But I changed my mind and decided to do it anyway. And there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. It's just, you know. That should block down pretty good. I might should have wiped it heavier, like I said. Maybe I can get it in one block, one, one block, and it might come out. I got a couple of pinholes over here I want to fill. You're not going to be able to see this, but that's what I'm doing. Since I got the extra filler mixed up, I'm going to wipe it in these pinholes. Normally you'd use glazing putty, but I like. I like using filler for pinholes if I can. It, to me, it sands better. But it's not, you know, if it wasn't for that, I'd, I'd just mix up a small batch of polyester glazing putty and use that. the filler and a whole bunch of crap or my spreader rather so that's that's pretty much ruined this spreader for this time around I got an extra bit of filler here I can put somewhere I don't want, like I said I don't want, the ripple I got to fix is right here 
So I'll just put it in there. And then rough it up and put some more filler on top to wipe the rest of that area. The reason I have that green masking tape on there, you can probably guess. This, this panel ridge, panel line and above is straight. I've already blocked it out. It's good and straight. So if I, I don't want to put filler off on this little, little panel line. I had to block it all off and clean it all off again, which will just tear that, tear this line up. This line, this whole back panel here has got filler in it. It was beat up. Anyway, so the tapes to keep the filler off the panel, obviously. Okay, that's that. Let me get my spares and everything cleaned up. I'm going to come back and work this down. I'm going to take the cheese grater here. And just kind of knock it down, work the sticky off of it, like I call it. Um, I'm not going to be able to do a whole lot here with it. I'm just kind of knocking it down. This stuff's it's still pretty sticky. It ain't got, it's not dried out the sand on yet. But I'm just kind of wiping off that top layer, like I said. I'm not. I'm really not doing any shaping just yet. And then this area over here, you know, it's not even. It's not to be rewiped anyway. I just hit it just because I wanted to. All right, let me come back when we get it, when we get when it's dry, ready to sand. It's not there yet. All right, we're about ready to sand here. I'm just running, just running a cheese grater across it. I've got that big 8 inch sander that I like to use for this kind of stuff. But I'll, this, this is not that bad. It's going to block out pretty easy. So I'm just going to do it by hand. It's alright. It won't take that long.
can see I'm just working it down, doing the, doing the crisscross thing. And I haven't even started the feather edge yet, so I'm just working it down. the feather on this edge so I'll, I'll dial back a little bit hit the side over here air hose is good for knocking the, the, the gummy filler out pop it right off still not quite hardened yet which makes it really easy to sand on so that's why I'm doing it like this once this stuff gets harder it becomes a whole lot harder to do this my hand especially Turn my back to the camera. Nothing I can do about it. So just. entire panel here which if this had been the outside of the car maybe I would have because um, feathering this edge right here is tricky no doubt Why you see guys doing show cars wiping the whole car. You don't have to worry about feather raising in the other area. They just wipe the whole thing and feather it off. It actually does make it a lot easier. Use a lot of filler that way. You know? And this is not a show car and it's back to going to be seen. Pretty flat. Just got. I just got a feather edge.
if it was a hood or a door, I, I would wipe the whole thing to keep from having to try to feather edge this. But I'm just going to feather edge it in best I can. Ooh. Hopefully when I block it, feather edge will block out. You really won't be able to see it. Cut it down too far. I'll cut it. I cut too high up here. Cut too much up there. It's still not feathering. I can see where it's not feathering. with a 36 because I'm really starting to chew it up with 36 scratches. Let me get the let me blob that right there. I'm gonna change to 80 grit and finish feathering that out. completely out like this. Um, but I'm not going to do it because you're never going to see this. So I'm just kind of feathering it to the bottom. Here's that thing. I 
and I'll block it with primer and that'll help, that'll help take some of, that, of it out, the low spot. It's starting to feather now, but it's still a little low. Pull the camera off in a second, I'll show you. Let me do this one too. So, see here where the sand scratches are running, you know, running in the, running out real smooth. That's feather edging. Down here where it's still kind of dark, got a line and no sand scratches, that's not feathered yet. Feather edging out here, not feathered in here, feathering over here. Same deal here, feathered on the outside and, and not in the middle. That's what I was talking about. This, this means this is still low here still low here. If I wipe this entire panel, I could block it flat. And I'm hoping it's when I prime it, I can prime it up enough to kind of get it where the butthole won't show. This is the back of a cab with a bed going to be on it. You're never going to see this. So that's why I'm not trying to make it perfect. If it's an outside panel, like I said, I'd wipe the whole thing, block it flat. But there's a difference. That's, that's feather edging. You know, that's, that's kind of how, what you're looking for when you see it. If the whole side's doing that, then you're feathered in and you're probably pretty straight. Um, like I said, this is where people make a mistake out here trying to feather stuff in. So let me put the camera back on and finish it up. We hit it with some 80 grit now, see if I can feather it on in. Take out these 36 scratches. starting to feather pretty good there now. This is where it's important to not sand it all the way down to 36. Leave, leave yourself a little bit high so you can get in there with 80 grit and work it on down. And 80 could get rid of most of your 36 scratches. these excess edges with some 180 to clean them up before I run.
there you go. That, that sounds pretty good. Let me get this one. tricky to feather edge or it's a little more stubborn it's definitely lower right here in the center camera again I'll show you okay here's my results on the back of the cab hang on I was going to film wiping this area and the battery died so I just just moved on and didn't worry about it you see me wipe filler over, over the over these two areas so this this wrinkle in this one was actually a little bit lower so I wiped a bigger area uh, just to prove, I mean, I've still got a, a low spot right here. It's not horribly low, but it is low. Now, it's a little bit high right here, a little bubble. You can see the little high shiny spots. little bubble in the panel right there, and a little low here. But I think when I prime it, it'll block out. Again, I could have wiped this entire section all the way, all the way down with a fix set. And I hate to keep harping on it, but this is the back of a cab where you're not going to see it. If it had been outside, I would have. Same thing for these two. But I do think, you can see where they feathered here. They feathered in pretty nice. There's a little low spot right there, but it's not bad. I can feel it with my hand. It's actually probably a little dent. Actually, it is a little dent, maybe. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little dent. So I may actually, I may wind up feeling that. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, the back of the cab is ready to prime. So I just wanted to show that before I shot primer on it and forgot to and I forgot to show it. So uh, anyway, that's all for now. I just wanted to show that. So we're on to shooting some primer. Okay, I've got 
I think, unless I missed a spot, I've got all the filler work. I've got, I've got all the filler work on the cab done. I have fixed some low spots and some wrinkles in the in the rocker panels where the there's a seal right there welded on in the wells. You know, wrinkled it up a little bit. I fixed that. That's rust pin holes. I fixed those. Some dings in my uh, drip rails that I I repaired them years ago. I ground them out and redid it just because that's that's just it's old. I just did it. It didn't have to. I just did it. Easy. Let's see what else. Um, on the other side, pretty much a mirror. All the other uh, mirror. Now in this jam. I mentioned I had to cut apart the striker area up here. I also had to cut it down here and reform this bottom of this jam for the door to fit. Like I mentioned, those this door did not fit worth a toot. So I wiped this area here to smooth it down. Same thing across the rocker panel. That was the rust pits, pinholes, pits, not pinholes. And again, the wrinkles in the in the rocker panel, the sill where the Cross member wells on right here. Um, more rust pinholes I filled up here. A couple little more dings in my in my drip rails that I fixed. Of course, I already showed you the back. While I went across the rear panel here. There's filler up all in the back of the cab that was here. I put in years ago. I've been blocking that. This cab was was beat up pretty hard. It wasn't butchered. I mean, it wasn't smashed or anything but there was little dents and dings everywhere so like I mentioned I pretty much wiped the entire back of the cab and the entire roof to get all the little dings and bumps and, and bangs out of it instead of having to mark my uh instead of having to work on one by one so I re I reblocked all that so I'm about to shoot some primer on that so we're closing the loop I'm getting closer and closer to getting paint on this thing I'm hoping now for the end of October, whether I'll make it or not, hard to say. Um, I'm having to put a lot of hours in my day job and my weekends. I've got stuff I have to get done, so I'm not I'm not having as much time to work on it as I'd like. But you know, it is what it is. It get done. It gets done when I get it done. I'm not going to rush it and screw it up. Okay, I'm block sanding the roof, and here's the spot I want to talk about for a minute. I have block sanded this this third over here. I have not put guide coat on this. I mentioned before I don't always use guide coat, and the reason is I can I can read the primer. Now, I'm not saying that guide coat's bad because it's not. It's a good thing when you need it. But I can definitely read this primer. This is a high spot. Got two low spots on each side of it. You can see the. See the little dark spot that hadn't even been touched? There's barely still one here. And that just happens to be with that brace in the cab. So I guess that's a factory ripple that's been there all along. Um, like I said, that's that's a little that's a high spot. This these are low, gotta reprime and reblock that. Um, the spot I'm spot I want to talk about is this crease right here. As I was blocking back into here. See, we got still a primer here. That, that was low. This whole area up here was low. And the reason it was low is because the crease was, was dipped down. And I could tell it was dipped down because it was nice and straight here. It blocked out nice and straight. It blocked out really good here. And then here I had a big dip where, where primer was not being sanded here or up here. So I, I, I could look at it and tell once I started doing that that it was a, the crease had a dip in it. It wasn't straight. So I've blocked, that's again, reading the primer, reading what it's telling you, high spots here, a little high, and then the big dip, and then I've got most of it out right here. Now, I've, prim I've sanded all my primer off. So I can read the crease, kind of, but not really well. So here's a spot, I am going to put guide coat back on here to, uh, to lick this, this crease, body line. And see, I believe I have it straight, but it still could be a little bit dip de doo whoop de doo so I am going to put guide coat on this, and then I'll come back and reblock that. Up here, this is the same condition. This is a little low, but it's not much. I can't even feel that one. So I'm not going to I'm not going to block on this one anymore. I'm going to I'm going to block 
down here on the side and then uh, reprime it and block it. And I believe this will come right out. This crease is straight. I, I can see this crease here still in primer. It's straight. So, um, anyway, that's my two cents on, or five, 25 cents on guide cut. I like guide cut. I use it for what I need to use it for. I don't use it for everything because I don't need to. You guys that are just starting out, don't have a lot of experience, use it. It's good for you. Um, but once you can learn to read the primer, you don't have to use it every time. Okay. Back of the cab, everything's primed. Back of the cab's primed where I wiped the filler on. Uh, it's primed where I blocked up top. It's, uh, it's all primed in the jams now. Everything's primed around here. All uh, this filler's primed. Got the front primed, the pillars, and, the, and they're across the roof. Windshield opening up here is done. So everything is primed now. This will be um, another block sanding. But I am close. This is like primer number two, I think. Well, that's not right. I don't know. I lost track. I've got to block it. I've got to block the entire cab at least one more time. Except the dash. Dash is done blocking. The dash and the upper cowl is finished blocked. And so is the firewall. So that's why I didn't spray primer on it. Um, I'm just going to wait and prime everything with I mix thick primer to wipe to uh, prime over my filler. And there's no need to, to spray out really thick stuff over the areas that are already blocked and straight. So I will prime basically the entire cab Next time I prime will be the entire cab, except the inside, more or less, except in the floor, and then of course the firewall, inner fire, inside the firewall, this is going to be done separately, in the back. I did not prime around the window yet, I still, ha I still have to do that, I want to block that because it's going to show, depending on how, I'm going to make some kind of headliner, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, and some kind of back cover. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I do know that this area here across the window is probably going to show. So I want to paint it and have it looking decent. So I will block that, prime that and block that. The only major area I still have to block for straightening is the roof. And you can't, I'm trying to show the roof. Um, that still has to be blocked from when I straightened it many, many, many years ago. I'm not, but I'm going to wait and do that till I get it. Get the cab down lower on the ground. I, uh, you know, I'm gonna lower down these jack stands or put it on the rotisserie. Do something. Um, so that's that. That won't be that won't be done just quite yet. But everything else, you know, I'll block around the windshield, uh, the that, the straight, you know, the 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 flat area around the windshield. I'll get all that blocked and probably block into this corner where I can reach. That way, the last thing I'll probably do is block the roof and prime that. Okay, back of the cab's primed, like I said before. This is the first prime over the filler. Except, of course, for here, I, what I, I've already blocked once. So, I'm going to block the lower side where the filler is in 180. The upper side, I will block in 320. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to block it now or wait I get the whole back there. Right now, I'm worried about blocking. Right now I'm gonna block. Hmm. Right now I'm gonna block. Golly. Right now I'm going to block the back here where I put the filler in with 180. Just kind of rough blocking it and see what I got. I'm going to 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 see what I got. I'm
I am nowhere near finished blocking. I'm just, I just got it stuff started to kind of show you what we're talking about dealing with here. Um, let me see. That's that may be too much light. There you go. Okay, dark spot. Primers. I'm still, I'm still low. All in through here. Still low, right in through here. This less light really works well for this. So, a little low spot here. I'm not talking about dense, I'm just talking about where I haven't blocked it down yet. And then, uh, low in here. Up here is where I cut it down a little bit. A little low. And over here, it's a little low still. A little low here where I cut down. So, uh, a little low. So, it, here's the thing about guide code. I can still read this primer and see where I'm low. And and, and high. Um, you know, once I get all this primer cut down and blocked, most, most of all this will be gone. It'll Because it'll be straight. I can tell what I'm doing just by reading the primer without using the guide coat. I'm not beating on guide coat. I like guide coat for, for you know... It, Lots of areas. It's good. It's good. If I was blocking this crease right here, I'd probably use guide code. But I've already blocked this crease years ago. This crease is straight. It doesn't need to be reblocked. Not for straightening. Just to block it to make sure all the sand scratches and stuff are out of it. Don't need guide code for that. Well, you do. But I, in this case, I don't. I'm, I could put guide code up here again, but I don't need to. I've already straightened this. And the sand scratches are out now. One day I'll do some straightening and I will use God code and y'all quit yelling at me. Okay, anyway, that's it for now. So, I've just got a lot of blocks hanging to do. i got to block all, all the back and the jams around. So, i got a lot of blocks hanging to do. Okay, here's a little tip I want to show. I've already blocked this this seam or this panel up here. And this, and this, this body line has been blocked couple of years ago whenever I straightened all this did all this body work well it's been more than a couple of years but anyway so this, this 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 body line here is straight and it really wasn't bent that much anyway but I did block it so now I'm going to re-block this upper panel here uh, to get the sand scratches out and then, of course when I prime this lower panel um, overspray got up here and I primed it pretty good anyway because I wanted to prime it one more time anyhow so I'm going to block this down, and I don't. And while I'm blocking, I don't want to block into this body line. While I'm blocking, I don't want to block into this body line and ruin it or knock the primer off. So I put this piece of masking tape on here just to protect the line, and I'm going to block down to it, and then uh, keep it protected. And then when I'm done, I'll come back and block in here very carefully, either with a block and or by hand. Um, Take a piece of sandpaper, roll it up on, take a piece of sandpaper, fold it up on its edge, bend it over, and basically make a block. Um, y'all, there's some of y'all laughing that that don't work. Buddy, it works. I've been doing it for 40 years. Off and on. Anyway, um, so back to block sanding. We'll block this body line right here. Um, if I was, if I was blocking this line to get it straight, I would use, you know, the standing block. This particular crease right here, the shape of it, I would probably go back, go old school, and use a paint paddle because it, it's just a, it's a perfect size to do that. I've blocked many a, a body line with paint paddle through the years. 
seen it, I've done it, seen it done hundreds of times. But anyway, but now this line is straight. I don't have to block it, but I do have to sand it um, because when you prime, you get overspray and you get and you get a uh, orange peel and you know primer's not not perfect by any means. You got to sand all this down before you paint. And if you don't sand it between blocking, like if I if I prime this, which I just did, and block sanded it, and then primed it again and block sanded it, and then primed it again and block sanded it, and never sanded this down in between priming. Primer will just keep building up and building up and building up. I'd lose this profile, but primer would get so thick it would come back and crack. All kind of bad stuff. So this body line has to be sand. You know, I blocked in it up here, blocked in it here. I gotta sand this too. Just just rubbing your finger in there, you know, you, you know, you've seen people talk about block and you don't not sand with your fingertips, and that's true because you can't get it straight. So I mentioned earlier using a piece of sandpaper as a block, and don't laugh at me. This is a piece of, you know, the 9 by 11 you, I, the way I do it, I cut it in half, fold it in thirds. I think that's the way a lot of guys do it. If you take your sandpaper again, we got it in thirds, and fold it again, and then kind of put a little curl into it, you basically got a block. It's not a straightening hard, rigid block, but it's straight enough. All I want to do now is come in here and set, knock down this overspray. I'm taking. I'm using two hands because you really can't do it with one hand because you can. It wobbles. But if you take two hands, and hold a paper like this. You can more than certainly go in here and sand along this crease very carefully. Knock down the overspray. Whatever you want to do. You're not going to straighten this filler like this. Well, you could. I've done it, but it's not ideal. But for doing what I'm doing here, locking this overspray down and just getting this smooth back out, it works great. I've already knocked it down, so I'm just I'm just showing you how I did it. And the uh, thing about overspray, if you don't know, let me show you. Here, here's my my primer that I've sanded. All right. Well, let me see if I can cut this light off. Maybe it'll show up better. This stuff is slick. It's I mentioned before. It's smooth as a baby's butt. I love this sand. This feeling of smooth primer. It's just I called it sexy one time. It just feels so damn good. Uh, oh, anyway, that this is smooth as a baby's butt after it's been primed. This is 320, by the way. Up here where I, you know, this is raw prime and you can't see it, but you hear it? Hear how it goes from... That's the roughness and the overspray and the orange peel and yada yada yada, all the above in this primer. Here's the transition from where I sanded to where I stopped spraying, because I only sprayed out to here. And then the transition out to here and then the overspray. I think you can see this. That's what you've got to get sanded out. This whole crease up here that I sanded was like this, either full of overspray or the models from the from the orange peel. Let me look over here. Same deal over here. You can see where I sanded and then where I stopped. That's why I was mentioning about reading primer. See how there there is the orange peel and the and the remodeling in the primer when it goes on. After you sand it and get it smooth. This is how you know it's it's smooth because it, it's smooth. I mean, it's a dumb thing, but so anyway, that's my little that's my little pointers, tips, and tricks, whatever about you know using doing a sanding block like that. I'm, I'm telling you, it works. Laugh at me if you want, but you go off and try it, and you might like it. All right, back to more sanding.